Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to Floss Tube number four. Let's talk Stitch Sania. So as noted in my previous Floss Tubes, uh, this year, 2020, I am choosing to participate uh, in Stitch Mania using the Stephanie Webb slash Lindy Stitches method called Stitch Sania. Uh, so what I'm doing is I work on a main, well, and my version of it. So I work on a main project Monday through Friday, and then I start something new every weekend. Um, but for me, the finer point is that the thing that I'm starting is a small project. So small being defined as it has to be less than 100 by 100 stitches. So that's how I'm doing Stitch Sania. Um, up until now, I've been uh, a really good uh, participator as in I watched what everybody was doing, watched all the floss tubes where they showed their plans, marveled at the people who chose to start 31 or more projects in the course of May, felt some anxiousness about having 31 projects on the go. Um, so historically that's how I've uh, participated in Mania up until now. So this is my uh, first year actually stitching participating in Mania. So uh, I'm enjoying that and that's a new experience for me. So we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, I thought I would start off by showing a previous finish. Uh, so this is a pattern called Chocolate Understands by the Stitching Bear. Because uh, I do enjoy my chocolate. I get that genetically from my dad. So it says uh, chocolate doesn't ask silly questions. Chocolate understands. So this is the pattern. Uh, it did come with the buttons that you can see here. Uh, so I did, uh, I stitched this last year and finished it. But true to form, I've changed a few things. So uh, I was looking at the pattern and kind of having a chuckle because there's a total of five colors in this pattern and I have graciously changed three of the five. So I've only changed 60% of them, so not, not much at all. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the major ones that I've changed is I really love the look, so clearly this is an over dyed that is used uh, in the words to get that variegation, particularly sort of the, the pinkish tones in there. And so that fiber is uh, Watercolors by Karen in Black Cherry number 81. But the Black Cherry that I could find uh, in my LNS looked absolutely nothing like this. It was dramatically different and not in a way that I felt was um, it, it wouldn't be a variegation that I would choose to use in this pattern. So that put me on the hunt for replacement. Um, so I never did find one that was the perfect combination of brown and pink. Um, but what I did end up using was uh, from the Cottage Garden Threads number 305 Gum Nut is what I actually used. And so then, um, actually let me show you my stitch piece and you, you'll be able to see what I've, well, we can, it'll be easier for me to show you what I've changed. So this is, um, this is my version of it. So again, so use the, the gum nut for in here. So again, not as much pink as you see in the original chart, uh, just because I couldn't find an over dyed that actually had the combination that I really liked. Um, compared to the original pattern, I've also changed the placement of the buttons. So originally, these three buttons in the chart were just placed in a row centered here underneath the words. Um, but I moved those around just to make it a little more compact. Um, again, so here was the chart. So my placement I felt just kind of squared it off a little bit more. So the other two colors that I changed were uh, 
just here in this box here. So this chocolate bo decorated chocolate box. So because I changed the color of the uh, over dyed for the words, um, the brown that they had chosen for this box, uh, it it looked it looked different. Um, it didn't go so well with the browns in in the variegated that I was using. So I just uh, used um, a different DMC uh, to make that. And so the DMC that I used for that, I changed it from DMC 938 to DMC 3857. And then, so again, the, the B, so there's actually, these are white and pink beads here. Uh, so they also came with the pattern. And so the other color change was the color of this bow. Um, the bow was originally DMC uh, 956, and um, it was starkly different than the color of the pink in the beads here. So I just, same thing, I just looked at the color of the beads, the pink beads that were came with my pattern and chose a DMC that was in the same family as that. So I changed it from 956 to DMC 605. So I always laugh because inevitably on these floss tubes I, you know, talk about something and go, despite how I like to do things. So not surprisingly, I don't tend to stitch on brown fabric very often, like very rarely. But I did feel that I had to put my chocolate piece on a brown fabric. Now, I think the name of this um, is Stone Lugana, but don't quote me on that. It didn't actually have a, uh, a name tag on it, um, but uh, it was not too brown, <laughs> which was something I was monitoring when I was choosing fabric for this. So again, this is the pattern Chocolate Understands by The Stitching Bear. So as true to form, this is my FO. Uh, I do think I'm probably just going to get it framed in a simple uh, dark brown, dark brown frame and probably put it somewhere in my kitchen. So that's my previous finish. Just going to move that. Okay, so then getting on with uh, my Stitch Sania projects. So uh, I'm going to start with my Monday through Friday project. And if I were really smart, I would start taking a picture of what it looked like at the start of the week and versus where it's at at the end of the week, which I didn't do. So uh, hopefully this week I will uh, get smarter and I will take a picture so I know what my starting point is. So uh, Again, uh, my Monday through Friday project is Fairy Winter Dream by Nora Corbett. So that's what the pattern looks like. Uh, the stitch count is 118 by 147, so it's not a horrendously large pattern, but not as small as my uh, official weekend stitch senior projects, which are... Uh, less than 100 by 100. So this is where I am as of Sunday, May the 10th. So um, what I did this week is, so again, uh, I, I, when I started stitching it, I stitched down the center of the dress and am focusing generally over here. I did put a little more up here in the top of the dress and I think I have like the top of this dress it's all done except for beads and starting the skin. Uh, so again I've added in some of the grays uh, along here and started to put in these uh, bright uh, aqua and teal colors in here. So it's hard to tell in this picture, but one of the interesting things is, so right along here, this is DMC 414. And as I noted in a previous video, I have inherited uh, a bunch of stash over the last six months from family members. And, you know, when I'm kidding things up, I'm kind of uh, 
and largely DMC threads. So as I'm kidding things up for projects, I'm trying to use up the inherited stash first. And so I pulled out uh, the DMC414 that I had inherited um, and put in about eight stitches and just went, wow, this, this does not look right. So then I hauled out my DMC color card and compared the, you know, the, the bobbin of, of DMC 414 that I was using compared to the DMC that was on the floss card. And they were noticeably different. So the inherited DMC was actually quite a bit more brown. And particularly given the coloring in this pattern because of how blue, blue, uh, heading towards white, um, the brownish undertone of the 414 was, uh, was noticeable. So I put in about eight stitches, looked at the DMC card, went, you know, the current version of DMC 414 is quite a bit more blue-gray. Uh, so uh, went back into the stash and hauled out my DMC 414 and uh, ripped out the eight stitches um, and used mine. So just something of note, um, particularly, um, you know, if, if you've inherited stash or, or if you've had stash for a while, maybe just do a color check against the DMC card, particularly for newer designs, um, just to see that your palette. Now, again, if you like what you've pulled and you think it all goes together fantastic, go ahead, use it. But again, I put my first eight stitches in and went, this, this doesn't look right. Um, so again, didn't change the actual color, just used a newer skein of DMC to achieve that effect. So the other interesting thing here as I was coming along, and I particularly wanted to uh, do these parts here, um, this design calls for bugle beads. Um, and I just wanted to see how they were fitting in. So uh, there's a bugle bead that goes in between each of these ones here and was very happy to discover that the bugles fit perfectly. So again, uh, the originally called for fabric was a 32 count uh, Ocean Kiss Linen by Wichelt. The fabric I am using is a 28 count Jobelin hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie in Midnight Trist. So changed the count, but it's an over dyed, and as we know, when you use an over dyed, you know it can turn into a slightly smaller count. Um, so was very pleased to discover that the uh, bugle beads were fitting perfectly in there. And so what I've discovered on my fabric is that the bugle beads are five stitches long. So. You know, as I'm doing them around here at the bottom, like there were a couple of instances where the space allotted for the bugle was uh, six stitches long. Uh, so I just filled in one more stitch of the color uh, around it uh, to make sure that it was five stitches long so that they'll fit. So again, uh, the interesting thing with this pattern is certainly as you're stitching along, uh, you can tell where the beads are going. So every every blank spot here in the dress is a bead um, of three different colors. You know, down along here, the space, there's gonna be some gaps left in here. Uh, hopefully next week when you look at this picture, uh, I'm aiming to have sort of all of this bottom done along here. Um, so I'm really actually hoping to finish all of the right side uh, this next, week and start working on the dress over here. Um, so it will get to that point where uh, I'm expecting that every blank spot will be a spot for a bead of some kind. So it is it is coming along. I When I was looking at it last week I was like, oh did I really do a lot of changes and have I made a lot of progress? And so it was interesting to go back and look at uh, how it looked in the previous floss tube. Uh, to, and sort of went, no, you actually have made some de decent progress this week. So, yeah, so pleased with how this is coming along. Not sure I'm going to get it fully complete in May, but uh, it's May 10th. Uh, I've got uh, quite a few more days to go on this, so we'll see how far it comes. 
So that's my uh, Monday through Friday piece. Um, and we'll get it now we'll get into the stitch Sania version of this. So as noted in last week's video, um, my project for weekend number one was Butterfly Square by Elizabeth's Designs. And again, so it came with the over dyed fiber uh, just to do this inside border of satin stitches. And uh, so the progress you're going to see on this is actually just what I accomplished on Sunday uh, after the video. So normally I do my stitching at night, um, but on Sundays because I do my video and I want to get it uploaded and blah 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 blah. Um, it took a little longer last week, so this is uh, this is where I got to um, last week. So what I managed to get accomplished, uh, so I was missing one of the borders here, so I finished that, stitched these four flowers in pink, the four corner flowers in blues, and started on that border. Um, so... And I have to say on Sunday night, it was kind of killing me because I really just wanted to keep going. And on Monday, I really did want to haul this one out because I figure it's prob I've probably got about an hour's worth of work left to finish the stitching. Now, there still are some beads to put in here, uh, attach the center bead. There's, there's about 40 beads in total uh, that go into this, but so maybe two hours in total to finish it, including beads. So I did struggle on Monday saying like, if you just worked on this, you could have it completely done, but that's not the point of Stitch Senior. I'm only allowed to work on this project on Saturday and Sunday. Um, although I'm leaning towards uh, June 1st, I'm pretty sure that this is the first thing that's gonna come out on June 1st and I'm gonna finish this. So again, the stitch count on this was 60 by 60. Um, and I think I forgot to mention that in case anybody's wondering what this little arrow is, when I'm working on a project where it's identical on all sides, I tend to just take a, a random uh, piece of thread and just stitch the arrow that I'm stitching so I know exactly which way is up and where I was going and what I was doing. So that's the purpose of that arrow. And generally, um, I have done a chatelaine, which you're going to see at some point here, um, when I took that to the framers, so I actually had done one of these arrows on each side of the piece, um, and when I took it to the framers, I actually left the arrow in so that as he was framing it and attaching hardware that he uh, actually could tell which way was up as well. So that's where I'm at on Butterfly Square. Not going to be finished in May, uh, but it's certainly going to be finished in uh, in early June. <laughs> so uh, weekend number two, so that's this weekend. Um, so I didn't get as much stitching time yesterday. I uh, was doing a couple of other things. Um, so this is the pattern for weekend number two, Music and Books by Little House Needleworks. So that's what the pattern looks like. I'm doing this on a random piece of gray linen. Um, and so that's where I got to yesterday. So it's uh, shaping up not too bad. Um, true to form, I have changed a couple of things because I can't help myself. So it's probably not evident, um, but around this uh, keyboard here under the word music, the box that goes around that keyboard is actually two different colors of brown. I'm choosing not to do brown. Um, in my house, the pianos are black, so I think of them as black. There's nothing wrong with brown pianos. I certainly grew up playing on brown pianos, but I like a black piano. Uh, so I've changed the outer border here to DMC 310 and I'm planning on stitching uh, the inner border as a gray. So right now, uh, the thread that I've pulled is actually that random 414 from Fairy Winter Dream that didn't work on that. So I'm gonna have a look and see whether 
that's the right gray to put in there. Uh, so I'll play around with that a little bit, um, but I'm going to change that. And then uh, I was debating the outer border around this piece is uh, one row of 310 and then one row of brown. And so in my head, I'm debating whether or not I'm going to do, uh, if I like what, what this ends up looking like, whether I do that or whether I keep it as one row of 310 and the inner row being a brown. Now, the brown that's called for is not this brown. It's actually one of the lighter browns that's used in this piece. Um, so again, uh, stay tuned. I don't know that I'm going to get to to the outer border uh, by the end of today. So uh, you'll have to check back in June and see uh, see what I end up uh, deciding on that. So that's uh, that's weekend number two. Weekend number three. What am I doing for this one? So this was part of uh, my Nashville haul. So this is Summer Notes by uh, Blackbird Designs. Which, if you can't tell, I'm doing something springy, doing something for every, every day, and now I'm working on something that's summery. So that's what the piece is going to look like. I'm choosing to do it on a... 28 a piece of 28 ice blue Lugana and again with the way that things get washed out in these videos uh, Not sure you can see it, but again, it's just a it's a very pale blue um, You know, there is a lot of blue in this piece anyway um, But I always like to think of my skies as being blue um, the called for fabric um, so they stitched their sample on 32 count Belfast flax linen. Um, so, but again, um, so I've pulled the threads. Here are my lovely floss away bags. Um, but did check when I was pulling to make sure sort of in those blue colors that, you know, they would still show up. So one of the interesting things is that this pattern, um, calls for all weeks dye works and classic color works so there's seven weeks dye works and five classic color works so that's a lot of over dyed um, colors for a piece uh, where the stitch count is 53 by 75 so I certainly uh, sat down as I was doing this um, and really looked at where the colors were being used. Because um, if they're only being used for a few stitches, you're never going to see the variegation. And it wasn't worth it to me. So true to form, I've some of them I'm just changing to the DMC equivalent, some of them I'm flat out changing. And so I had a friend who you know, was marveling at the fact that I changed my color so regularly. She's like, how in the world do you ever keep track? How would you know what goes where? I'm like, you know, write it on your pattern. So I do make a working copy of my pattern because I do change my colors all the time. <laughs> so I, I always like to keep the original pristine so people can know what it's supposed to be. And then on my working copy, I make my changes. So here's what my list looks like. So this is what I do. I go, here's the list of colors. Uh, you know, you can see that for the ones where I've chosen to use DMC, I've circled the DMC, put a check mark beside it because I've, I've got it and it's in a floss away bag ready to go. Um, but you can also see that there are ones where I've written in other names. So for example, um, you know, this calls for Weeks Dye Works Bullfrog and uh, Pea Pod. And so those two greens are used in uh, the trees here. So there's enough stitches in there where I go, you will be able to see the variegation. But when I pulled Bullfrog and Pea Pod, they were too yellow for my liking. They weren't how I wanted my trees to look. 
So I've changed mine from Bullfrog, I've changed it to Gast Bayberry, and I have changed uh, Pea Pod to Gast Grape Leaf. So they're two colors that are in totally uh, similar um, similar greens, a lighter and a darker, uh, and I'm going to use them on the trees. Um, you know, I've also got a note here. Um, there's a yellow, so I'm not using the overdyed for that, but I haven't decided exactly which uh, which yellow I've got. So I've got a couple of notes there. So, you know, typical me. Thank you for the color suggestions. Let me change a few of them. One of the interesting things is uh, I've got sticks and twigs. It's called for. It's actually going to be the roof color. Um, but it's not a heavily variegated, but there is some variegation. So I haven't quite decided if I'm going to use the DMC or the sticks and twigs. So I do have both in my uh, project bag for that. The other thing that I'm planning on doing is uh, I'm probably going to change, um, like there are some words that are interspersed through here. You know, sunshine is done in pink. I don't think of sunshine as pink. I think of sunshine as yellow. So um, I'm expecting that I'll be changing um, some of those. You know, flowers is done in green. I think I'm going to do that in pink. Um, so that's, uh, you know, stay tuned as I change those around. The other thing, so there is a button pack that goes along with this, and I don't think I'm getting the button pack. Um, one you know, I'm not sure I like that particular bee. I may get a bee charm um, to put on there instead. Um, they have got uh, stitch centers for these, so I don't know that you have to have those buttons. And because I'm a Canadian, I'm not planning on attaching um, an American flag to mine. I just need to see if there is a Canadian flag button uh, that is the right size to fit on there. So uh, whether I get creative, if there isn't, then I'll have to get creative and do something else with what I'm putting in there. So I'm not sure I'm going to start with uh, putting in the flagpole because I'm not sure that I'm going to end up having a flag on mine. So that's what I'm going to be starting on week number three for Stitch Sania. So I'm actually... Sticking to my plan, so I will work on music and books today, and then I will dutifully put it away and follow my rules for uh, Stitch Mania. Um, so I think I'm going to do better week weekend number two about saying, okay, you've worked Saturday and Sunday on this, and now you have to put it away. I don't think I'm going to have quite as much. I think part of it has to do with the fact that there will be more left to do to finish it up. Um, than there was on the butterfly square, so I think I'll do better from that perspective. This week, I actually have some haul. So, uh, as I said uh, in my previous video, I uh, put in a number of uh, orders as I was kitting up some potential projects for Stitch Mania, because you know, and and kitted up more than I was going to need, um, just in case you know. All the stores are are flooded with orders, which is great for them. But uh, between you know slower suppliers and everything that's going on, um, everybody just has to be patient and and understand that their stores are absolutely for sure doing the best that they possibly can. Uh, but things are probably going to take a little longer. But I was able to get some of my stuff. Um, so. Uh, this is, I got a piece of fabric. Um, this is mint green 20 count Lugana. Um, so I've got a couple of patterns where uh, I want them to end up being ornament sized. Um, but if I stitch them effectively, this is, uh, you would either need a 40 count or a 20 count to make them the size that I want. I don't love 40 count. I don't love 40 count linen. I do need to give, um, there's also a 40 count even weave called Verdal. Um, 
And so I do need to get myself a piece of that. But Ferdell right now um, only comes in white. There is a, a overdyed fabric company that was at Nashville this year that is doing some overdyed 40 count for it all. Um, but before I start investing in that, I should probably stitch at least something on Verdal and see if I like it or not uh, before I start, you know, wildly going off and buying a bajillion pieces of uh, overdyed 40 count. Uh, so this will uh, get the piece that I want into ornament sized. Uh, I also did um, get a piece of that uh, 20 count Lugana uh, in just plain old white. Uh, I've got a project um, where uh, my mother in her stash had given me this blue um, pot uh, where in the center of the lid of that you put a stitched piece. Um, now she had actually taken a Hardanger class uh, at an LNS that used to be here um, and so she finished that piece and so she kind of gave it to me and she said I finished the thing that goes in the center all you really have to do is if you just finish it it would be complete and that was very nice and thank you mother but I don't really like the small piece of her danger. I don't like the design of it um, and so I appreciate the gesture and I will keep the her danger piece um, again it's just it's a small circle um, but it wasn't something that I would that I would enjoy, and so I have found a piece um, where I uh, look forward to putting it together. But I'll have to stitch it up, and again, in order to get it to be um, to fit into the opening of the lid, it needed to be done on on twenty count uh, to get it to fit. So that is now uh, ready to go. So. Um, you know, I've got two more weekends in May uh, where it could be selected. Uh, pretty sure I know what I've picked for week four, so it's really only a contender for week five. Uh, so we'll see what I end up choosing on that. So that's the fabric that I got. Um, threads. Threads came in. Um, so Glendon Place released their... Uh, stitch and be well free piece it's a large piece but i really like it um, again don't know when i'm going to stitch it but uh, i've got the pattern and as my mother taught me uh, when you get the pattern uh, and it calls for specialty things you need to get all the specialty things now while they're available uh, so i did uh, one of my orders uh, was to get the dinky dyes uh, for that um, not surprisingly, my LNS didn't have all the dinky dyes in stock, but they did have a few of them. So just to show you a little bit, so here are a couple of the dinky dyes <laughs> that they had in stock that are part of that pattern. And uh, if you look at those um, and you look at the background and maybe the color that I'm wearing, um, you know, you might see why this color palette appeals to me. So. Uh, the ones that they had, so this is Ocean Pines, and this is Kirabilly. Now, there's quite a few more colors left to come, so this is the only beginning of that. And then uh, some Silk Lame Braid, blue, green, purple, that's totally my color palette. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, as well, uh, the pattern in Glendon Place form requires a whole bunch of beads. Actually, I'm just gonna fold these up randomly, see if we can't get the glare off of it. So, here's the, here's the colors of Mill Hill beads that go in there. Again, a lot of green and purples. <laughs> My color palette. And then, um, so these are, um, I'm working on kitting up my descending order, um, but in true Judy fashion, I'm kitting up in mostly the called for uh, gast, but I am changing some of them. Um, so these are um, 
This is Classic Colorworks Deep Fennel and Weeks Dye Works Cadet, um, which are uh, going to end up in, in that project bag. Start time for descending order by Long Dog Samplers, unknown, but I'm kidding it up. And then uh, these are um, all colors from, so this is um, Gas Midnight. Um, again, uh, the descending order uh, calls for a lot of this color. And so I used everything that I ha had in my stash. So this is the problem when you say you're stitching from stash is you use up your stash, but then you sit there and you go like, I've pulled all of that color. Now I have none of it. <laughs> How can I live without some of it? So I used up all of the midnight that I had in my stash and went, this is a color I really like. And I could see me choosing to randomly want to substitute it in some other pattern. So I have to go and I have to get more of that to re restock my stash. So this is going into stash. Uh, all of these classic color works are for projects that I was kidding up for Stitch Sania or as possible contenders for Stitch Sania. So this is classic color works pink posy, classic color works blue moon, classic color works uh, blue beadboard, uh, classic color works carry berry. and Classic Colorworks Cashmere. So again, those were specifically pulled to go into uh, some contenders for Stitch Sania. And they're still contenders for those uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, one of the things uh, that I was kidding up, uh, it was interesting, so um, the designer was making a comment when she was working on this. Um, she normally stitches in hand, but for this particular pattern, she personally stitched it in a hoop and she went, it is not enough to keep your project straight because of the way that it's designed and the stitch that you're doing, it tends to pull your fabric out of shape. And so she very strongly recommended and I actually know this designer, so I pay attention when she says stuff like that. Because if it isn't working for her, for her, uh, either in hand or in a hoop, in a hoop, which I go and probably then on a Q snap, she's like, "You really should put this piece on stretcher bars to uh, keep it, uh, keep it in in the right shape, go to the rectangle." But so I there's I've got two sets of these. One of them fell on the floor. So this is just again. So it's a small project. It's a little thing, because that's all I was kidding up for Stitch Sania. So I've got two sets of six inch mini stretcher bars um, so that I can uh, put my, put, tack my fabric onto that um, when I get to that project. So that is my haul. Uh, so let's talk Stitch Sania. Um, it's been an interesting experience for me. I'm, again, that first weekend was a little hard because I just wanted to finish the small thing. Uh, but working out on week two, I think the interesting thing is I've discovered that I think I like having a bigger project and a smaller project because I can see that in the course of any given week, you're going to have those days where even just looking at the bigger project, you're going to look at it and go like, ugh, that's a lot of work to pull, to, you know, have it out and ready and to see progress on it. Um, and so I'm, I'm leaning towards, I think at the end of this, I think I will keep a larger project and a smaller project going so that on those days where, you know, if you get home late for work or it's just been a really, you know, it's been a really long day and you're just, you just look at that larger project and go like, ugh, I just don't want to work on it. If you have something small, um, where you can see, you know, a lot of progress in not a lot of time. Um, I can see that that would be helpful and productive and help me work through my stash. So um, I don't know that I want to have 31 starts or 30 whips or 20 whips or all of that stuff going on. You know, I'm totally fine with like a bajillion FOs that have never made it into fully finished objects. Um, but I like, I, I can see the appeal of sort of working through my stash. 
So again, I didn't have as much stitching time yesterday, which, you know, but again, like I made progress, like discernible progress on this piece. You know, it was nice to see the piano come together. It was nice to stitch the musical notes and go, oh, look, there's the notes. They're done. Um, so I can see the benefit of this. And so I think, you know, at this point, I can see keeping a version of Stitch Sania going post, post May, but, um, but really taking the form of um, having a larger project and having a smaller project so that you can switch between the two depending on how the day has gone, how you're feeling, um, but making progress on things. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope everybody is staying safe, following their government uh, instructions on what we're doing. Uh, we are heading towards that time where uh, things are going to start to reopen um, at very different rates. Um, I'm a big proponent of uh, everybody has to decide uh, for themselves what they feel safe doing. Um, you know, between, don't get me wrong, I, along with many people, can't wait to see their hairdresser. Um, but everybody needs to feel safe and comfortable as things start to reopen. So we just have to be respectful of what those decisions are and people are going to make a variety of decisions and we have to support them in those decisions. Uh, last but not least, uh, today is Sunday, May the 10th, 2020, which is Mother's Day. So I just want to say a happy Mother's Day to everybody who's watching who's a mother, as well as to everyone who it plays a role in a child's life. Uh, whether or not you're a biological mother or an aunt or, uh, you know, a friend of the family who spends time in, in children's lives uh, to the extent that you are influencing children around you uh, positively. Happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, I hope you're having a great day. Um, and again, I hope everybody's staying well uh, and finding comfort and joy in their stitching. And uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you next week for floss tube number five. So thanks for coming. If you, if you, liked this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you have. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next week for floss tube number five. That's all for me, Judy the City Stitcher, and uh, enjoy your stitch mania, whatever form that takes.